Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends this is Gunjan here welcome to the sixth part of the dirty chess tricks after the move e4 e5 and knight to f3 the most classical reply from the black perspective is the move knight to c6 and against this setup I'm going to suggest my own tricky repruta which you are going to use against the right opponent at the right time so not only to surprise him but to get the win very very quickly here I propose you should play the move bishop to c4 and more or less black has two good options that is knight to f6 and bishop to c5 in this video we are going to see knight to f6 after knight to f6 the usual response from the white perspective is the move knight to g5 which is known as a fried liver attack but when black plays this way he is very much prepared against this attack so I'm not going to recommend in this video instead of that I'm going to recommend that you should start with the aggressive move d4 and this is the starting point of the max length attack as you can see I have highlighted by the arrows black has few options so as usual let's look at the worst one first if knight captures b4 then white has this winning sequence start with the move bishop captures f7 and after king captures f7 knight captures e4 check wherever the king moves white will simply take this knight and remain a clear pawn up where black king has lost the castle right the second move is knight captures e4 but after this white can simply capture this pawn and now black is having a huge difficulty based on the fact that what is threatening not only bishop captures f7 but queen to d5 is already in the air so for example in one quick game my opponent foolishly played the move bishop to c5 but after queen to d5 there's a threat of capturing the knight and checkmating black on f7 and please note that bishop captures f2 doesn't change the scenario because white can simply play the move king to f1 and the threat remain as it is so black is definitely going to lose one piece so that conclude that at this point black has the only good reply and that is the move e captures d4 after this white should continue with the fast development and accordingly white should castle on the king side and once again black has two options knight captures e4 I'm going to cover in the next video so in this lecture we are going to concentrate on the move bishop to c5 which looks very logical because not only black is protecting this pawn but black is just one move away from the castling on the king's side and now we are entering in the max length attack proper here white will start the attack with the move e5 so you can see that pawn is hitting the knight and believe it or not black doesn't have any time to move the knight let's see some of the examples in one game my opponent tried the move knight to e4 here I continue with the attacking that knight with the move rook to e1 so my opponent very naturally defended that knight with the move d5 but here I just grab the pawn and once again hitting the knight now if black plays over here bishop to f5 then after d capture c7 and queen capture c7 knight to d2 will nab the piece so considering that my opponent here plays the move f5 which at first sight looks very good because it's protecting the knight but after the following sequence that is d capture c7 and queen capture c7 and knight to d2 my opponent find out to his horror that he cannot castle on the king side so he desperately try to save the e-file via the move bishop to e7 but here I continue with the move knight captures knight and after pawn recapture I just grab the pawn with the move e4 here my opponent played the move bishop to f5 and at first sight it looks like black is all fine because not only black is hitting the rook but black king is one move away from the castling on the queen side but here come the winning blow and my opponent completely overlooked this move and that is the move knight to g5 bam after a long thinking my opponent realized that how stronger this move is for example if black castle at this point 
then after bishop to e6 white will gain at least an exchange so for example if the king moves and the bishop drops and if the bishop takes bishop then after knight captures e6 white will be a clear exchange up so seeing that my opponent decided to capture the rook but this leads to amazing checkmating sequence here i continue with the bishop check and please note the king cannot go to the f8 or d8 square because of the knight fork so my opponent played the move king to d7 but after queen to g4 black king doesn't survive longer once again if the king goes to the d8 then knight to e6 is exceptionally strong so my opponent played the move queen to d6 but this leads to the instant disaster and if you want you can pause the video there is a checkmate in two so i'm showing you right now so it start with the move knight captures e4 and after king to e5 and queen to e6 is a checkmate now same can be said if your opponent play the move knight to g4 because after this what will continue with the move bishop to f4 and if black castle on the king side at this point then after the simple move h3 black knight has the only square left that is h6 and white will simply capture this knight and giving black shattered pawns so that is more than enough compensation also white can start his attack via the move c3 so all in all it's a wonderful position for white so considering all this we can easily conclude that at this point black has the only good move and that is the move d5 a counter attack to the white bishop here white should continue with the move e captures f6 and after d captures c4 f captures g7 is not strong because black hasn't committed king side castling so instead of that why should first of all give this check and king to f8 looks pathetic so the only good reply looks like bishop to e6 and here white has once again an exceptionally strong move knight to g5 and you can see i have highlighted by the arrows black has many options but amongst them there is only one move that is right so let's see each moves by turn the first obvious looking move is queen captures f6 and at first sight black position looks so good except one move which will ruin the whole structure of the black and that is the move knight captures e6 f captures e6 is pretty much force and after this white has this lethal queen check which will nab the piece of the black now same can be said if your opponent plays moves such as g captures f6 once again white can capture this bishop and give this check and remain a bishop up and the third option which is very much similar and that is queen to d7 more or less same story because white is going to capture this bishop and after f captures we have this queen check so three moves has been dismissed let's look at rest of the moves the fourth move black can try is castling on the king side afterwards white will simply play the move f captures g7 which will attack the rook now black has two choices if king captures g7 then can you find an amazing move over here you can pause the video and you can find it i'm showing you the amazing move and that is the move rook captures e6 bam white is a clear piece up because now black cannot capture the rook if black captures the rook then knight captures e6 is a super royal fork amazing looking piece right at this position if the rook moves so for example rook to e8 then queen to h5 threatening to checkmate black on the h7 and unfortunately bishop f5 doesn't work over here because white is going to checkmate anyways to the black king on the f7 square so that means castle is prohibited at this point the rest two moves left are queen to d6 and queen to d5 let's look at queen to d6 after queen to d6 white should continue with the move knight to e4 so hitting the queen hitting the bishop and once again black has few choices if the queen goes to the f8 square 
then after f captures g7 black is simply losing a piece because after queen to g7 knight captures c5 and white is a clear piece up if the queen goes to the d5 square then white has this amazing shot that is f captures g7 and black cannot move the rook because if the rook to g8 then once again we have the royal fork on the f6 square the third move is queen to e5 but that is going to be a transposition from queen to d5 variation so let's look at the final move that is queen to d5 after queen to d5 white has once again a very strong move and that is the move knight to c3 and at first sight it looks like white has blundered but actually it's not because if pawn captures knight then white can simply capture the queen as that bishop is pinned so that means that knight is untakeable if queen goes to the d6 or the d7 square then we already seen the consequences so the only move left is queen to f5 after queen to f5 it looks like black has survived from all the attack also white knight is hanging so very obvious is white has to move that knight to the e4 square which will allow black to castle on the queen side but before we look at the castle there is a one move I like to mention that is g captures f6 which has been played in one of my game against this I continue with the move g4 hitting the queen and queen has to stay in touch with the bishop because if the queen goes to the g6 then after knight captures e6 and pawn captures e6 white will simply a piece up after knight captures c5 instead of queen to g6 if queen goes to the e5 square then after very simple knight to f3 that queen is trapped the only square left is d5 afterwards we have this queen and a king fork so back to our business the main move is castling on the queen side and if you carefully look at this position black has survived from all the attack and white doesn't have any attack to speak of but the perception can be deceptive here the fun start with the move g4 so once again hitting the queen we already look at what happened after queen to g6 so that means queen has three possibilities left if queen captures g4 then after very simple queen captures queen and bishop captures queen white has this lethal move that is knight captures f7 so not only forking two rooks but white knight is also attacking the bishop so it's almost winning position for white the second obvious looking move is queen to d5 and I must tell you that I have reached this position many many times and many of my opponent has fallen into the wonderful traps exist in this situation so let's see them after queen to d5 white should continue with the move f captures g7 so this is the right time to capture this pawn and the obvious looking move is rook to g8 afterwards white should continue with the move knight to f6 so forking queen and a rook the most important factor is queen has the only one square left that is the d6 square now here white can take the rook and remain exchange up but please remember white king position is open so white need to be very very careful so accordingly white should play the aggressive looking move knight g to e4 so you can see now the queen is in big big trouble and queen has the only two square left that is e7 and e5 and let's see the consequences of each square so first move is queen to e7 after queen to e7 white should certainly capture this rook and when black capture the knight white has this move bishop to g5 which indeed turn out that white will be the whole rook up the second move is queen to e5 after this white has this super aggressive move that is the move f4 so that means the queen is trapped and it has no move to go so black has to forcefully play the move d3 which has a discover check to the white king and here white will play king to h1 and now the idea of d3 is to give a space to the black queen 
she is going to come to the d4 square and at first sight it looks so impressive about black but believe it or not just one move and black can resign and that is the move c3 boom the whole queen is gone no space so those are some of the wonderful traps exist in this max lang attack i hope you enjoy all of them there is a third alternative for black that is the move queen to e5 which you need to do some research on this but there is one last trick i want to show you that if you are playing with an higher rated opponent and you get this position at least you can force a draw out of this position the sequence start with the move knight to f3 so once again queen has the only space to go that is the d5 and after f captures g7 and rook to g8 white can do this perpetual knight moves that is knight to f6 so queen has to move to the d6 and after knight to e4 we can repeat the moves and get the draw well thank you for watching this video feel free to like and comment this video and i'll meet you in my next lecture that is the morphy attack bye